Is there a video about the new route? Uh, yes and no. There is a video about the new route. However, you're watching it being made right now today because this stream is going to be the base for the YouTube video that is going to be explaining the new route for YouTube. So, you get a live showcase. But, so it's good in one way. The bad part is, for all the impatient people out there, they're going to be sitting there pepper hands because they want to get the answer now, but they have to wait, you know, two, three hours for the entire answer to come through. But it's all good. Exca exactly, Chad. It's going to be an exclusive showing. There has been some massive discoveries found that has allowed a longer category that isn't any percent to have a brand new kind of work th uh, workflow through a round. That is what you're going to be checking out today. Now, here's the thing, however, chat. I've only gone through this route one time because um, I thought that um, instead of practicing more, let's just do a run. Now, this is going to be uh, quite a rough run. I'm telling you right now, there's going to be a lot of mistakes. Uh, but what's the fun in a, a perfect speed run when it's better to get a slower one out there first and then just improve it after that, right? Now, first things first. First thing you're going to be noticing, because this is the GameCube version, lore is back. That's right. We get four minutes of lore every single time, baby. Now, this is actually one of my this is actually one of my least favorite cutscene skips in all of the GameCube versions. So hopefully we can get this first try. It's very, very difficult to do, but hopefully, like I said, we can do it first try. But it is very difficult of a skip, so let's hope for the best here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to obtain first something called double storage, which means that I'm able to super swim while I have storage enabled. Now, what I'm going to try and do here is when you get close to Great Fish Island, there's going to be a cutscene that plays. Now, what I'm going to try and do here is I'm going to try and drown. And while I have my half a second of, you know, voiding out the drowning animation playing, the cutscene for Great Fish will activate while I'm in my drowning sequence. It's a very small, tight window to do this, but hopefully we get this. Did it work? Okay, whoo, first try. Really clean, okay. So, the cutscene activated right as the game was fading out, which means that the game activated the Great Fish cutscene, but I did not have to watch it. So now, I can immediately sail to um, a windfall and get the pirate ships. I don't have to watch the cutscene of Great Fish, and more importantly, I don't have to sail all the way from Great Fish back to windfall. That must have been on the last frame, because when the cutscene activates, you actually see yourself falling in the air, but I didn't actually see that fall at all there, so uh, I got very lucky right there with the timing. Did we get it? Beautiful. There we go. First try. Woo. All right. And that is the Katri cutscene skip. Uh, also, Chad, remember how hard the Bosky skip is on the HD version? On GameCube, you just walk straight through. Because since you have such poor collision with chest storage, you can <laughs> squeeze through smaller areas than you normally are able to. Which means that we can simply just walk through that little crack right there and be completely fine. <laughs> All right, chat. Here is a very funny situation where we're actually going to be outsmarting Nintendo. So, remember earlier how I mentioned that there's an item called a Tingle Balloon? Well, the Tingle Balloon would absolutely break the puzzle in the next room where you have two scales and you need to weigh one of the scales down so you can stand with the statue in your hand to jump over. Now, they realized that the use of a Tingle Balloon would completely ruin this puzzle. Now, here is the interesting thing though. Even though they realized that the Tingle Balloon would break that puzzle and they disable the use of the Tingle Tuner in that room, if you activate a Tingle Balloon in this room instead, and you then walk through the door, the Tingle Tuna still just barely has enough stamina to go through this room, walk across the entire puzzle, and then fall down. So even though they added, this, uh, they added a feature to disable the Tingle Tuna in that room to avoid you from doing that exact same thing, you can still do it. Also, I'm gonna try and not actually ring the bell here. 
on the GameCube version, you can actually stop swinging the bell and just, it's just stationary. Got it. Woo. All right. And there is Barrier Skip. On the GameCube version, you do not have an item slide item, so you have no way to use a glitch to obtain a lot of speed. But, when you have a bomb over your hand, or over your head, and you press the B button, the bomb will push you forward. Now, by setting it up so that I'm at the perfect positioning, when pressing the B button right there to drop the bomb, if done perfectly, the bomb will push me forward and be able to clip right through the barrier, skipping it, which is the only way to do it quickly on the GameCube version. Thankfully, we actually got that quite quickly. I did have to double check the visual cues on my second monitor, but overall that went pretty well. All right, so chat, right now, the only reason we wanna go to Helmrock at all is to watch this one cutscene right here. This cutscene changes something very, very important internally in the game, which is a flag. This changes our animation set from one and two. In simple terms, just imagine that animation set one is early game cutscenes. Animation set two is end game cutscenes. So now we can successfully watch end game cutscenes without crashing the game. Because if we wouldn't watch this cutscene, if for example we went to Wind Temple or Earth Temple and we watched the cutscene there, the game would just crash. But we don't want to take all the time to go down to Hyrule now, because normally the only way to leave this area is to go down to Hyrule. We're gonna try and get around that by doing a very difficult glitch, and you've probably never seen this glitch before done, uh, because it hasn't really been useful before this moment in time. Hopefully if everything goes well, though, like I said, we should be able to pull this off. That's gotta be it. What, really? Oh, that's BS. That should have worked. 100%. I'm grabbing the pod because if you walk up and down, you slide like this. But by holding that pod, he doesn't do the sliding animation, which means I can just perfectly turn up and down much faster. Okay, beautiful. Okay, so now we are inside of the floor, and now we're going to take damage, so I'm only at half a heart. Now, if you watched Helmrock skip before, you will realize that we're actually going another path than we usually do. Usually, we actually go on the left here, but now we're going on the right. That's because this isn't actually a skip specifically designed to skip Helmrock. This is actually a skip designed to skip having to go down to Hyrule 2. We're gonna get up here. Now we're gonna try and clip up on this wooden platform right here. Clip inside of this part. Then we're gonna stand up here. We're gonna do a side hop and leaf right here. We're gonna grab this door frame right here. And then, we're gonna climb up here. Once I'm up here, I'm going to take out my Wind Waker. No, I did, I did it wrong. Oh, oh, I did not. I'm gonna take out my leaf. YouTube will never know. YouTube will never know, Chad. No snitches. Snitches get stitches. Still first try, Chad. I feel rage building up inside of me right now. Then we're gonna line this up with this ledge right here. Yeah. Oh. This can still be first try. Don't look at the segment time. Climb this up. Blow your leaf. Here we go. Okay, so right now, we have storage enabled, which means that when we activate this loading zone, we will still technically have control over Link. 
what I'm gonna try and do right now, and hopefully we can get it, is I'm gonna take out a bomb, right as it's about to explode, I'm gonna side hop, take out the leaf, the leaf is gonna activate the loading zone, the bomb is gonna explode to push me forward, and hopefully if everything goes well, we are going to void out on the same time as the loading zone activates, so we're gonna go through the loading zone and die. Here we go. Yes! Okay. We got through the loading zone, we died, we spawn in this room, and it's done. You might be wondering, why is this even useful to begin with? This seems so weird, Linkus. Let me explain. This room is a cutscene room, which you're never supposed to be in, so it doesn't have a set flag for where it should respawn you. So it defaults to the default lo uh, spawn area, which is Windfall Island, which means that we were able to go back to the overworld when we're not supposed to, skipping all of Iral 2 and Helm Rock. And that's it, first try. All right, here we go. This is the hardest glitch in the game. Wish me good luck, Chad. Here we go. This is early Earth Temple. All right, here we go, Chad. Pause champs into Chad. One frame late on the B input. Even after the entire precise setup, you have to do a frame perfect bomb boost. <laughs> Was there an ad right there? Well, hey, Chad, at least we failed it. At least you didn't miss the successful attempt. Damn it! Frame early on all, th on all three of them. Come on. I have to reload my safe if I failed this one because some of my last bombs. Damn it! Oh! Oh no, I'm too far down. No! No! <laughs> no! I didn't get a per- No! I forgot to mention, even once you get the clip, you have to do a perfect out-of-bounds leaping section to even make it. And I didn't get a frame perfect leaf pull right there, so I didn't make it past the stone into the area. All right, here we go again. Yes! Okay, we got it. Early Earth Temple has been completed. Okay, whoo, that's it. That's early earth temple. Okay, no medley required. Oh my god, that was so close. Okay, freeze him again. Put him on the switch. Stand on the switch and bam, first room skipped. No need for medley, that's it. I'm gonna try to clip out a bounce right here, take out my leaf, and then leaf around this area and land on this door frame. No! Damn it! Why did I slash my sword again? Oh! Now, this is where I get really pissed off. This is where I get actually mad. We just went through all of that, all of this, so that we could beat Earth Temple, right? We got the Tingle Tuner, we did all those frame perfect tricks, just so that we could get through this dungeon without meddling. And after all of this, we find out, after entering this portal, that Medley has secret tech that she's not sharing with the rest of the crew. Because she doesn't have a tingle tuner. She doesn't have a leaf. Yet, here she is in the cutscene. How did she get here? She doesn't tell us. She has tons of secret tech to skip all of Earth Temple on her own, and she doesn't tell us. It pisses me off. Now, there's some brand new tech coming up, which 
many of you might not have seen before. It is super, super cool. It's coming up in about five minutes from now. So stay tuned for some super cool tech in a little bit, Chad. What? <laughs> what? Hello? Excuse me? Thank you! What? <laughs> yep, that's the new tech, Kappa. That's the new tech I was talking about, Chad. Very cool, right? All right, Chad, here it is. Here's the new tech, you ready, Chad? So, one of the biggest issues with Wind Waker on the GameCube version, Super Swimming, unlike the HD version, is the HD version, you can get as much speed as you possibly want. But <clears throat> that is not the case on the GameCube version. On the GameCube version, you're quite limited on your speed, which means that you often have to stop on two or three islands to, to recharge the super soon, right? Because you're just gonna be running out of air before reaching your final destination. But that's where Task Rat comes into play. I'm going to buy a Tingle Balloon. And then, right as I'm about to drown, I'm gonna go up onto an island, walk in midair with my tingle balloon, maintain my speed, and then continue my super swim without having to stop anywhere. And then I can do my entire super swim in one go. Preferably, don't hit an island by accident and completely mitigate what you just did, but unless you hit the island, you're good to go. All in one go. Now, that's not where the new tech ends, because we're about to come up on another new strat. So, what I'm going to try and do right here, and each time I fail, I feel a little bit bad because you do hurt my car, is I'm going to try and have it so that my car gets exploded by a bomb on the same frame as I pick him up. Got it. So, uh, by doing so, when we throw, <laughs> when we throw Makar, he will get thrown across the entire room, uh, and uh, just end up right here. So we don't have to do anything in this room. We can simply just pick him up and continue as we were, uh, because he gets uh, quite the damage boost. <laughs> I'm gonna use a bomb boost to escape this minigame here. <laughs> really? <laughs> and what we just did is we activated the loading zone for Papa Ganon at the same time as we voided out, which spawns us in the cutscene version of Papa Ganon's room, which means that now we didn't have to actually watch the cutscene for Papa Ganon, we don't have to deal with Papa Ganon, and we can now try to skip Papa Ganon. Unfortunately, this is the same cutscene skip with a little side part to it as the GameCube or as the HD version, meaning that this only has a one in three chance of working. And every single time it doesn't work, I have to redo all of this. Now here's the funny thing. This trick is only possible with the use of the Picto box. Normally the GameCube version does not render everything at the top of this arena because it's too far away. But with the use of a picto box, it renders objects further away, which means that it does load all the objects at the top of the arena. So you can actually try to do this. I right, still one in three chance, completely RNG. 
But if we get lucky, this should work. Yeah, there we go. All right, here we go. Did we get a one in three RNG chance? Posh champ. No, we didn't. It's three minute time loss for each attempt. Ouch. I think this might be the brand new world record to be fair. So I guess the new record won't have it first try. That definitely did. Here we go, please work. One in three chance. Let's go! We did it! Uh, for people that don't know how this works, I'm basically shooting these two Morths through the platform. And it's luck-based how far the Morth bounces, by the way. So if I shoot this Morth, you see he bounced in place, and that wouldn't have worked. Let's shoot this Morth. And that would have worked. Did you see how he bounced all the way back and actually touched this warp pod? That would have worked if that was a real attempt. Because what would have happened right there is because of how far back he bounced, he would have touched the, the pot lid. And uh, since he's on fire, he would have put the pot lid on fire, which means that it would have burnt up and you can then skip the entire arena. So that's why it's completely luck based. I don't want to bring Link to you back, chat. Sorry. You know what, chat? I will give you a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity offer. If we somehow get 500 subs before I beat this game, I will add Link as Hugh back. Oh, no. Oh, that's unfortunate. No 500. Anyways, GG. There it is. Three hours, 45 minutes, and 41 seconds. First ever completed Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. All dungeons with early Earth Temple. There it is. GG. Definitely world record. As long as you don't look at the leaderboard. Uh, we definitely got a long way to go, but that there it is, chat. That is the hardest uh, Zelda speedrun, in my opinion. That's it. <laughs> Um, to get this consistently and do all of these tricks first try, I will definitely need to do a lot of practice, but um, I definitely think it's viable. I'm actually quite excited to start running this.